Hello, how are you doing today? In this video, we have 10 questions to answer about the dental field to make you understand more what's happening when you go to the dentist. Number one, have you ever heard the dentist say 1 FML, 9 DO, 12 BO? Do you know what this means? Dentists use a numbering system in which each tooth is given a specific number. We start from the upper right side. The first tooth in the top right is numbered as one, and we go all the way to the left, number 16. We have 16 teeth in the top side, 16 teeth in the bottom side. Your wisdom tooth here is number one, this one number 16, and this one number 17, and here number 32. So that's how it works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 8 is this one, 9, and we go ahead. So when the uh, doctor is shouting numbers, uh, he is talking about your teeth. And then the MFL, DO, etc. Uh, these are the surfaces of the teeth. Each tooth has five surfaces. The one that is closer to the midline is called mesial surface, and it's abbreviated M. The one that is away from the midline is called the distal surface and abbreviated D. The one that is toward your lips, the outside, is called facial or buccal. If it's in the front tooth, we say facial. If it's in the back teeth, it's buccal. And the one that is towards your tongue, facing your tongue, the surface from the inside is called lingual. Lingual or palatal. Lingual for the bottom teeth palatal for the upper teeth. So when we say D O uh, D F, it's distopatial, which means the decay is on the distal, the back surface, and the facial, the out surface of your tooth. And the last surface is occlusal, which is the biting surface of the tooth, which is where you te your teeth hit together. It's called occlusal surface. So these are the five surfaces of the tooth. And thus, let's say you go to the dentist and he tells the assistant 5 OB. What that means is your tooth number 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is your first premolar has a decay in the occlusal and buccal surface, which is on the biting and into the surface facing the cheek. Next. When does the dentist recommend that you have a filling? When does the dentist recommend that you get just a filling? No crown, no extraction, no root canal. This is when the cavity is small, doesn't include a full cusp of the tooth. So each tooth uh, is divided into cusps. For example, the molar contains five cusps, uh, which is the elevation on the tooth surface. It's like mountains on the tooth. The tooth is made out of grooves and cusps. The cusps are the elevations. So if an entire cusp is broken, then we have to place a crown on the tooth. If the tooth has decay that doesn't include an entire cusp and doesn't reach the nerve, then all we need is a small filling. On the other hand, if the decay includes a full cusp, then we need a crown. If it reaches the nerve, then we need a root canal. Then let's go to the next question. When will the dentist tell you that your tooth must be removed? When do we extract teeth? The doctor will recommend that your teeth will be removed when it is non-restorable. For example, the dentist expect that if we place a crown on the tooth, it will break off in less than a year or months. Uh, how does he determine that? It's depending on the amount of the tooth structure that is left from the crown of the tooth. Uh, in general, the rule is they need three millimeter of tooth structure above the junctional epithelium, which is the uh, area where your gums are attached to your teeth. Other cases that uh, make us recommend to extract the tooth, if there is severe bone loss around the tooth, reaching more than two-thirds of the root length. Uh, so I'm going to put a picture right here of, the to in, of a tooth in this case. 
as you can see in the x-ray any dark spots in the x-ray means soft tissue the white spots are hard tissue so your tooth is hard and it appears white on the x-ray your bone is hard and appears white on the x-ray on the other hand cavities are soft which appears as dark on the x-ray uh, bone loss appears dark on the x-ray because it means bone loss loss of what appears white on the x-ray which is bone uh, so in this x-ray that we are looking at right now uh, as you can see there is a dark area around the root that reaches all the way to the last third of the root in this case this tooth is uh, non-restorable the tooth must be removed because it can't it cannot withstand any type of forces and thus to summarize the tooth might be removed if there is not enough crown structure to support the restoration or there is not enough bone coverage around the root uh, to maintain the tooth a third case in which we can uh, extract the teeth if the tooth gets fractured and there is other rare cases uh, like external resorption etc we will not talk about right now next question can I wait before getting my treatment this question is very hard to answer a lot of patient ask if they can do their treatment later if they can wait before doing the treatment and this uh, this question is hard to answer because the progression of dental cavities and bone loss is not easily predicted in some cases bone loss can happen quickly and the cavity can expand quickly and reach the nerve and if you wait in these cases it's gonna be much worse when you come back and you will need a more extensive treatment which will cost you much more on the other hand some cavities and this happens in many cases take very long time to, prog to progress in fact in some cavities the patient might come after five years later and we will see that the cavity is still the same in size and did not progress anymore in either case we cannot predict how the cavity will progress and this depends in many factors uh, of them are how much you brush your teeth and what you eat and the shape of the cavity etc uh, and thus because we cannot predict if the cavity will progress faster or slower we always recommend that the patient do the treatment as soon as possible to avoid any bad consequences the next question is if tooth is being removed what are the replacement choices so let's say your tooth is hopeless and the doctor decided to remove this tooth don't worry about it there is multiple choices that you can choose from in order to replace this tooth we will start from the least expensive to the most exp expensive choice the least expensive choice to replace teeth is removable partial dentures in most offices removable partial dentures cost anywhere between one thousand to two thousand dollars which is very affordable compared to other choices of replacing teeth especially if you have multiple teeth missing for example you can replace five teeth using partial denture for the same price that you replace one tooth and this is basically the only advantage of removable partial denture the disadvantages of removable partial dentures include a low satisfaction rate many patients when they get their partials they don't get used to them easily and um, end up not satisfied with the dental treatment 70% uh, of patients get satisfied with their partial dentures 30% unsatisfied second they don't last long and if you don't take care of them they might increase your chances of getting cavities because you have to remove them every day and wash them at night and then wear them again in the morning and you have to take them out every time you brush your teeth in most in most cases they don't last long time around just between five to seven years 
and then you might need to do adjustments and or replace the entire denture. The second option we have to replace a tooth is to place a bridge, which is basically two crowns covering the tooth behind the tooth that we lost and the tooth next to the tooth that we lost. These two crowns are connected to what's called a pontic, which is an extra crown in the middle to replace the tooth that is lost. So from this description, we can see the first disadvantage for bridges, which is that you have to drill the tooth behind and the tooth in front of the tooth that you lost in order to replace it. The second disadvantage to bridges is that it's, they are harder to clean uh, than the next choice, which is implant that we will talk about later. The reason why it's hard to clean bridges is, as you can see, the three teeth are connected to each other. Now, when you try to floss, you have to bring floss threader, insert it under the bridge in order to reach to this area. And if you don't brush around the bridge, very good. And then you have a cavity under the bridge you have to replace the entire bridge again, especially when your doctor recommends four or five unit bridges or connect multiple teeth together. I don't recommend choosing this unless you have very good oral hygiene because one cavity underneath any of these teeth might require you to replace the entire bridge, which will cost a lot. Uh, the advantages of a bridge over the removable partial denture is that it's fixed in the mouth you don't have to take it out and in in most cases it lasts longer than the removable partial denture it can last in general from 10 to 15 years and it is less bulky it's more comfortable inside the mouth than having a removable denture the bridge also costs more than a removable partial denture and the last option which is the best option uh, is placing an implant to replace this tooth Implants cost much more than bridges and removable partial dentures. An implant can cost anywhere from $4,000 to $8,000 in the US. Some offices might charge even more. But now let's go to the good part. What are the advantages of implants? Implants have very high success rate. Implants can last very long time. 80% of implants last for about 30 years or more 90 percent last more than 15 years they are easier to clean than bridges and partial dentures because they are standing alone and you don't have to drill the teeth next to them you can floss between them much easier than bridges and the last advantage you don't have to drill any teeth in the process another disadvantage of implants it's is that the process of getting it takes long time. The dentist can place the implant directly after removing the tooth, but after placing the implant, you have to wait a duration of about four months in order to get the permanent crown that sits on the implant. These four months are given for bone to heal around the implant. And thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for our next video.